Welcome to the Talking Poem Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Green. Usually I have on a guest, but going forward, I'm going to be alternating episodes with guests and short form episodes. It's very easy to edit the short form episodes, but the episodes with guests take a lot longer. And during the semester, that's not really feasible. So there will be weeks where there's no episode, but I think you and I will survive. Today, I want to talk about how we write about absence and loss. And I think about this in part because I write about different kinds of absence and loss, like I think everybody does. And also when I teach my personal essay classes, this is where it crops up mostly. Students will write about someone who has passed away, but they don't depict that person. They only depict the feeling of loss. And I often find myself pretty distant from those, in part because I don't know really what has been lost. Thinking about family members that one has lost, I think that there's kind of not easy emotion, but an automatic emotion that goes with, oh, my mother passed away and my, or my father or my brother. We as readers, I think, assume a kind of closeness, but we don't necessarily feel it. And so today I wanted to just briefly talk about the William Matthews poem, Men at My Father's Funeral, because I think it does such a fantastic job of showing absence by showing what is still there, which I think is essential to showing absence, that we have to see some contrast between what is there now and what was prior. So, William Matthews, Men at My Father's Funeral. The ones his age who shook my hand on their way out sent fear along my arm like heroin. These weren't men mute about their feelings, or what's a body language for? And I, the glib one, who'd stood with my back to my father's body and praised the heart that attacked him, I'd made my stab at elegy, the flesh-made word. The very spit in my mouth was sour with ruth and eloquence. What could be worse? Silence, the anthem of my father's new country, and thus this babble, like a dial tone from our bodies. I want to start with a quick story about one time when I taught this poem, You know, I talk a lot about, you know, showing and and putting readers in the scene. And one of my students by this point was like, well, he doesn't show the things at the funeral. You don't see people in black suits. You don't see like the casket. And in listing details you would normally find, he sort of described what I think gets filled in when we see the word funeral. And we have certain expectations of what a funeral is going to be like. And where the poem really generates this power is the depiction of the men, the ones his age who shook my hand, they're still there. And so the fear of loss is different for him. They sent fear along my arm like heroin. They have their fear that they're going to pass because, oh, he was our age. And then there's also this fear that, you know, there's more loss coming. Ironically, for me, it's the lack of particularity of the men. We don't see any of them as individuals or in individual terms, they're just sort of this vague mass. And in seeing them as a vague mass, it, for me, shows some way in which his father is being blurred. And he knows that his father is going to be blurred by time, that we don't get these details or that many details anyway, in which they were or weren't like him. These men weren't mute about their feelings or what's a body language for. We don't necessarily need to see the particular body language. I think the phrasing here, what's a body language for, conveys or allows us to imagine what that body language is showing. And then I, the glib one, he is also a man at his father's funeral. There's this turn and, you know, I'd made my stab at elegy, the flesh made word, the very spit. Part of what's making the poem powerful is the immediacy of the scene and the immediacy of the moment for him that, you know, we get the spit in his mouth, we see him standing in front of the casket, and that, I think, helps us feel his loss because we feel the particularity of his experience. And then that great last stanza, what could be worse? And it sounds like the answer is silence could be worse. Silence, the anthem of my father's new country. And then the final sentence, which is a really gutting turn, And thus this babble, like a dial tone from our bodies. It's really what could be worse is the silence contrasted with the babble. And so we see the contrast of what is there, and at times the implication of what is not there. 
and then also the contrast between what is there and what is not. And so I love that what could be worse is not just silence, but it's the silence alongside the babble that we see the loss and we kind of hear the loss both in the silence of the father. I love that the anthem of my father's new country gives a sense of the scale of what that is like. He has a, a loyalty and a citizenship in, in the country of death. It's really, really powerful and gutting. And thus this babble, like a dial tone, that like a dial tone, no one likes listening to a dial tone. And so it's not just that he calls it babble, but the dial tone is the call hasn't been made. The connection hasn't been made. There's this waiting for some kind of connection. And I just feel that the poem is presenting this absence in terms of both what is there and what is not. And, you know, so the question is, how do we present what is not there? And this poem is great because he doesn't actually describe his father in any particular way. We don't necessarily see his father. He doesn't describe the characteristics of his father. And yet we see uh, the sense of his connection to his father. And so the presence and absence aren't necessarily manifested in, oh, my father was like this. I have lost this kind of person but simply this is the feeling that's here. This is the feeling it's not. They're the men mute in the body language and their muteness gives us a sense that these are really chatty guys, but it's a, it's a really powerful poem that I really love. And, it, and for me, again, it's that sense of how do we present what has been lost? No ad this week, no game, unless I wanted to do something where I'd get 100%. Thanks for listening. Go have a great day. Read some poems, pet some dogs, and support striking workers wherever you find them. Bye.